rather than uh, waste any more time listening to me talk, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Pete Smith, N4ZR, in my uh, neighboring state here in West Virginia. And uh, Pete, uh, thanks for joining us today. I know this is a, a subject that a lot of people are interested in, and uh, I kind of play around with it myself, and I suspect I'm going to come away with a little bit more knowledge today, too. So anyways, the uh, floor is yours, Pete. Uh, go ahead. Okay, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, looking at uh, the attendees list, I was struck by how many familiar uh, names and calls I saw. I think I've met a lot of you guys at, uh, at Dayton and various places. And as Ken says, I'm also very happy that we have uh, a substantial audience from Europe and, uh, and Latin America and beyond, because uh, 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 I enjoy myself intensely popularizing the reverse beacon network, and I uh, hope that you all bear with me. I, what I plan to do is to talk for about half of the time, and then I've got uh, both the uh, RBN and uh, the ViewProp software, which I'll talk about in a moment. Got them both on live here, and uh, if you are interested in exploring things in any more detail, we've got, uh, we've got the capabilities. One thing I should say going in here is that I am the propagandist for the team, but the team is, is predominantly guys like uh, Felipe, PY1NB, uh, Dick, W3OA, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to forget one now. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm having brain lock. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, there's a, bu there's a bunch of guys in, involved in this, KM3T, um, uh, SV, SV3SJ, F5VAH, um, it can be quite a coordination exercise, as you can imagine. Well, this all started about five years ago. Okay, kids, why is page down stopped working there? Okay. This all started about five years ago when uh, Felipe and I were chatting about the potential of VE3NEA's CW skimmer software. And he had a web page that was already reporting spots worldwide. And we came up with the notion that, uh, hey, we could have these skimmers uh, send their spots up to um, a web server, which in current turn could feed a web page. And that has now grown into what you see before you on this uh, screen. Uh, on a typical day, even a weekday, over 100 skimmers worldwide, two Telnet servers, the web page, and uh, some 40 or 50 clusters worldwide, Telnet clusters, which are uh, forwarding our spots to, at any given time, four or 500 users. And of course, all that goes absolutely crazy on contest weekends, but uh, that's another story. The uh, progress has been, has been pretty good, as you can see. Uh, uh, last year, for example, we came up just under 100 million spots in the 365 days, and uh, every indication is that the uh, slope of that curve is going up, uh, if anything, more steeply than it has before. So we'll see. I don't know where this is going to end, but uh, it uh, certainly has, has changed things, at least in the CW and RTTY worlds. Um, more on that in a bit, too. Now, what, what did it take those 100-plus guys to, to set up their, their nodes? Well, first of all, an operator. Uh, a software-defined defined receiver of some kind. That can range from a $20 uh, single-band soft rock kit to a $900 uh, QS1R receiver. Uh, and uh, all of these have one characteristic in common. They receive bands, not individual frequencies. Bandwidths of 48, 96, 192 kilohertz. And in the case of the QS1R, actually, uh, up to seven bands of up to 192 kilohertz. That's quite a, quite a reach, as you can imagine. Um, you need some sort of a multiband antenna, not something that's reasonably sensitive on all the bands. We generally like to see people do um, uh, omnidirectional antennas or multiple antennas because uh, otherwise you don't uh, catch some of those unusual, uh, unusual openings that come along. Uh, it requires a copy of the CW skimmer software from VE3NEA and a Windows XP 
7, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1 uh, PC. Some of them, some of these skimmers out there are now also running uh, DL4 RCK's RCK skimmer, which decodes limited bands of RTTY and PSK31. We provide the aggregator, aggregator software. Uh, it's, it's free and it's updated frequently, runs under Windows. And you'd need a moderate speed internet connection. But so the demands are of the, of the uh, system are, are fairly small and we think that accounts for the enthusiasm that people have shown in taking it on. This is just a little bit of history. Um, not much to say here. When we began, when the uh, receivers started to come out, the first spots were in 2009. Um, spots analysis tool uh, we'll be talking about in a moment, but this is one of the uh, neat gadgets that's available on the website uh, for comparing your signals with those of other stations uh, at various places in the world. We've had this huge increase, which I already showed you graphically, in the spot volume and the number of skimmers. And in 2013, there were two notable events. One is the release of ViewProp, which is a piece of software that makes uh, unique, takes unique advantage of the uh, RBN's uh, spotting capabilities. And it also marked the beginning of the uh, RBN gap filler program. Uh, first such initiative was uh, funded by the Yasme Foundation, and thank you to them. Uh, we, uh, as a result of that, there is now a full seven band uh, skimmer node in uh, Bangalore, India. Oh, come on, Larry. <laughs> Excuse me one second. I got to get rid of this thing. I had Skype running on the other machine and I forgot to turn it off. Okay, that should take care of it. All right, so anyway, uh, that uh, Bangalore node is now up and some of you may have seen spots from it. The website looks basically like this today. The map, which is derived from Google Maps, displays uh, spots for a selectable interview interval uh, and color codes them by the, uh, by the band involved. Uh, in this particular interval, you can see FT5ZM hadn't yet come on the air, so you won't see any traces down there. But uh, the uh, list of skimmers is on the right-hand side. The uh, spots coming in are updated every minute, and those are on the uh, bottom of the page. And you can run filters. So you get spots as they happen, like this. Uh, You'll get multiple spots often of the same station. Uh, that's fine. That's, a, in fact, a useful piece of data when you, when you come down to it, as we'll see in a bit. Another thing that is available there, and this is available all the way back to the beginning of the RBN, is archived raw data in a zipped up uh, .csv format, which can be read by Excel or, if the files get too big, by um, Microsoft Access or other software that you may have available. And what that means is that you can, you can go back and you can look at what happened in a, um, a given contest weekend or uh, do a comparison, if you wish, uh, between yourself and somebody else. This is the gadget I mentioned earlier called the Spots Analysis Tool. The way this works is that you select a comparison date, you select a reverse beacon at which you want your signal to be compared or anybody's signal to be compared with anybody else's, and then you select up to 10 stations which you would like to compare. Uh, and in this example, uh, I uh, chose W3LPL because any comparison between his signal and mine would be ridiculous. Uh, but I was on 10 meters during that contest. And as you can see, our, our uh, signal strengths pretty well rose and fall with the, uh, rose and fell with the uh, uh, band's peaks. But I was always weaker than he was, almost always. Oh, well. 
but uh, it can get really interesting if you compare, for example, W3LPL and K3LR or KC1XX or NQ4I or one of the other uh, big stations uh, and uh, see which ones had strengths in which, uh, on which bands and in which areas. It's a, it's a very useful tool in that respect. There's been a lot of argument about the pros and cons of RBN spots. Um, of course, there are 100 times as many spots as a traditional spotting network. Spots everything. Um, so for a contester in particular, uh, that's very convenient. There are lots of duplicate spots, although as I note here on CC cluster, uh, the duplicates are deleted before they're distributed to the users. Uh, in uh, other, uh, well specifically in AR cluster version 6, you need to set whether or not you want to receive the duplicate spots, uh, but you can do that and filter them out too. Now one, one downside that a lot of people have noticed is that there are too many busted spots. Because if you think about it, if you've got 100 skimmers and each one is 99 plus percent accurate, then when you get duplicate spots, you're apt to get a bust or two. And uh, in fact, uh, I've been told by operators at uh, big multi-ops that, that uh, on Sunday afternoon, uh, if you don't filter them out, uh, it there's almost nothing but uh, busts showing up on their band maps because they've already worked so many people. Fortunately, the answer is at hand. Uh, uh, CT1BOH has developed a set of filters that are now available on AR cluster version 6. And those filters can largely eliminate this. They do a very clever job of identifying uh, busts and even telling you, if you wish, what the real call sign is. Uh, you can filter out so that you get no busts, or at least none that it identifies, or you can, uh, or you can uh, elect to have them come through, but have them tagged as such. And the last thing is that uh, we had some problems, uh, particularly in about a year ago, with frequency images due to setup problems in various of the uh, software-defined receivers particularly the simple ones. Uh, these uh, images would show up as uh, signals that were suddenly way off where they should be. For example, if somebody was transmitting at 14025 uh, and the center frequency on that band was 14045, let's say, there would suddenly be a signal at 14070. No, 14065. Anyway, the point is, it was the same distance from the center frequency, but on the opposite side, and that confused things. The CT1BOH uh, filters, again, take care of that. So uh, we think we've got the uh, frequency accuracy and the uh, decoding accuracy fairly well under control now. Now this is just an indication, if you will, of what really um, the RBN is sending at any given time. For example, this is this is absolutely every spot, duplicate or not, okay? And these are various levels of um, validation, essentially waiting until the system hears these spots one or two or three times. And this one down here at the bottom, this line, is the non-dupes when it's all said and done. So you can see. Um, about one in six uh, typically uh, will be unique spots, or at least unique in the last 10 minutes. So how to use them? Well, this is assuming, of course, that your setup is assisted, but uh, what you would do, what you should do, is to set up filters at your cluster node or in your client software save a favorite combination in your logging software, uh, use the quality filters that CT1BOH has, or use a CC cluster node, and 
either way, you'll get you'll get good quality spots and a lot of them. You need to develop techniques for jumping spots quickly. I mean, one of the big advantages of the RBN is that as soon as somebody calls CQ, chances are he will be spotted. Doesn't wait for somebody to work him and then spot him or whatever. So if you can figure out a way to jump on a spot as soon as it appears, uh, you will often get there before the first other caller does. At least it's fun to try. <laughs> and all I can really say there is experiment, see what works for you. But there's, depending on your logging software, there are lots of, lots of things you can do. Now here are some examples of filtering to reduce the number of dupes and uh, to uh, limit, if you will, to stations that you can probably hear. Say, for example, this, this AR cluster filter here is one I use. I want to see all the spots of me, and I want to see anybody who is not a skimmer on the North American continent. But if they're skimmers, I only want to see them if they are repeated at least three times worldwide, and if they're spotted from one of the five states that immediately surround me here. So you can see that narrows down and filters things a lot. CC Cluster takes a different approach. They use a client to set the, uh, to set the filters and then they send them to the cluster node. So you can see, for example, that you could decide which which uh, spotter states you wanted to have over here, check the boxes, click the button that says send to cluster, and from then on you'd only get spots from that uh, particular state or states. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much the story about spots, so we can come back to anything you have. Well, there are two big things. The first of all is uh, antenna testing and comparisons between antennas. Next, of course, uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment, is near real-time propagation reporting. When did the band open to ZL on 15? And what is it doing there at midnight? Well, that sort of, that sort of uh, odd openings uh, will turn up on the RBN. And so there's a lot of potential here, particularly in the archive data for propagation research. And we would very much like to see um, any kind of work that people want to do with the archive data. It's there, free for the taking, and uh, we're hoping that some interesting things will come of it. Here's how you test antennas or test uh, compare antennas. Send test or CQ twice, send your call two or three times, and look for spots. Okay, then QSY half a kilohertz or so. The reason for that is that uh, CW Skimmer has a built-in uh, function that will only respot a station on the same frequency every 10 minutes. So QSY a little bit, change antennas, try it again, and then look at the spots from a given. Oh, what did I do there? I got my arrows in the wrong place. Anyway. If you look here, you'll see N7TR heard me at 32 dB signal-to-noise ratio. And then down here, second time around, he heard me at 8. What I had done, in fact, was to turn the antenna 90 degrees. Uh, so uh, uh, not surprisingly, there's some uh, off-the-side rejection. So that's one way you can do it. Of course, you can also use the spots analysis tool uh, to uh, compare the antenna that you're using versus the antenna that your friend down the block was using uh, in a given contest. And here's another tool which I, I want to introduce today and encourage everybody to uh, take a look at. It's called ViewProp. And we can, we can talk a lot more about that. But what it does basically is it uses all those duplicate spots to sort out spots to and from an area you define, your neighborhood, if you will, places where you can hear stuff that other people you know, in your neighborhood can hear, to characterize the propagation that affects you in something close to real time. 
this is one of the ways it displays the information. This is a little hard to read, and I apologize for that. But uh, if you if you follow along, you can see that these these bars here, their height, the highest one on each band represents the peak number of spots that were heard on that band in a 30-minute period. And so you can see quite clearly where where 10 meters opened at its best. Now you can you can do the sort of chart by band or you can do it in a lot of different ways. Here's a here's a closer look at that. That's telling you the number of times that a station in your area was spotted or that somebody in your area spotted a station outside it on each band in each half hour period. And that bar that you see at the left hand side is the current time and as it sweeps across the chart as you can imagine you can tell whether today is going to be better or worse than yesterday. At the same time that it's charting them uh, the software is also reporting who they are, how loud they were, what kind of a spot it was, um, et cetera, a lot of data about the, uh, about the stations. Now that looks pretty overwhelming and probably contains a lot of junk that you don't much care about, but the software also provides extremely granular filtering. As you can see, you can filter by give it special calls, by signals longer than, louder than a certain amount, uh, by uh, CW signals that are faster or slower than a certain amount, coming from a given continent to or from a given continent, zones, prefixes, DXCCs, states, you name it. You can you can use it to identify just the just the stations that uh, that you want to hear or you want to have listed or displayed. You can also, in non-real time, download and chart RBN data for any day in the past. And finally, ViewProp has a built-in Telnet server, which can be inserted between any server with RBN spots and your logging program. So you can use its filters to feed your log logging program to narrow down the field if you wish. And so you can understand, I think, why I'm so excited about this particular piece of software. Uh, this uh, slide simply gives you a list of uh, resources that you can use if you want to pursue this further. Uh, but I've actually finished a little faster than I had hoped, so um, let me just uh, turn it over to Ken and let Ken uh, manage the question process and okay, Pete. We'll see what, what people would like to know more about. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, some interesting stuff there. I've... Uh, Played around with that a little bit uh, with my two element 160 array uh, switching directions and looking at the uh, the differences uh, some of the stations were reporting. So you know that's uh, pretty uh, pretty handy to have. Okay, uh, so uh, question time. Uh, go ahead and uh, send them in. Uh, we will uh, take those questions and uh, pass them along to Pete. And uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, since I was asked during the uh, presentation, uh, is uh, if this is being recorded, and in fact it is, like all of them, and um, we will uh, post it on the uh, WWROF uh, webpage, probably in 24, 48 hours, uh, whenever George K5TR has time to um, post it, we will uh, get it up there for uh, anyone who might want to watch it again, or those that missed it. We had a number of uh, hams in India who uh, signed up for the presentation today, and one of them said, uh, I don't know, it's the middle of the night there. He was getting kind of tired, so he was going to come back and uh, and we'll watch the recording. Okay, so uh, once again, go ahead and fire in your questions. Uh, if you would, um, uh, go ahead and put your call sign in there as well, um, because we get the name, but I'm not always sure who uh, who uh, what the call sign is uh, for the person that's uh, shooting in the uh, question. So. Um, first one comes from Ted, uh, off the wall, is anyone doing research into SSBRBN, um, Pete? <laughs> People have asked me about that, and my, my uh, suspicion is that you need no look no further than Fort Meade, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is where the NSA lives. But aside from them, uh, no, I'm not aware that it's being done. 
Uh, there is, I think, some serious effort being made now on an RTTY skimmer, uh, which uh, sounds like it should be pretty straightforward. But Sideband's probably a little ways in the future. Yeah, but I, I imagine someone will at least uh, take up the challenge and try it. So, <laughs> Okay, a question from John. Uh, on the RBN site, in the skimmers tab, how are the stations sorted in the simple list? Well, let us see. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Hang on one second. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Here we go. Uh, the simple list starts with those that are online now. And I think the sorting is, is strictly in how recently they were heard. Yeah, yeah, that's the way that works. And the, um, the detailed list is sortable on a number of bases, including call sign. OK. Ready for the next question? Sure. Okay, uh, comes from Randy, Alpha Alpha 8 Romeo. Um, would there be a good resource uh, to go to for a beginner, someone that's uh, just starting to dabble in this? Well, um, there's a tutorial on using the RBN on the RBN blog that uh, it's uh, reversebeacon.blogspot.com. Uh, and uh, I just put it up about a month ago, so it's uh, so it's pretty current. Uh, that's probably the best place to start. Okay. Next question comes from uh, Hank uh, Ke Zero Charlie United, uh, wondering how is the uh, signal to noise ratio determined? It's determined uh, by VE3 NEA software at the second that the um, call sign is validated, that is, as soon as it's been copied twice or more so that uh, the uh, software knows that it's probably a good, uh, a good decode. Uh, and it's uh, simply, I suppose, a digitized comparison of the uh, code elements versus the background. Okay, you did answer one of mine then too. I didn't know if it was just a quick snapshot or if you're transmitting for 15 or 30 seconds if it was an average, but it's, so it's just the, the very first snapshot then. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the average would be nice to have, wouldn't it? Yep. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, three Victor 8, Bravo, Bravo. Um, so uh, interested in installing an RBN in Tunisia, North Africa. He said that would be the first in North Africa. What is the best SDR to purchase? Good quality uh, price ratio. Well, uh, I think probably uh, the QS1R uh, from uh, Software Research Laboratories, uh, the seven band receiver that I mentioned. Uh, because it has an absolutely unique ability to, to copy up to 792 kilohertz bands at once, whereas everything else that's out there has to be band switched, and therefore you're sort of time sharing between the various bands rather than listening to them all simultaneously. It would be terrific to have an RBN station in, uh, in Tunisia, and I'm hoping that uh, we can help you make it happen. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't remember if you had your. Uh, well, I guess you can look you up on qrz.com or your, your most places. You can find your email address. I'm sure uh, I can shoot you an email otherwise too, and you guys can work on that. That'd be great. Um, sure, it's. Uh, go ahead. It's n4zr at contesting com. Okay, uh, Ted wa 3 aer was uh, asking again about uh, well PSK. Uh, if it's operational, I mean, you mentioned RTTY. I don't know if that includes PSK, and uh, any idea when that might be ready for testing? Well, PSK is operational now using the uh, RCK skimmer software, which is transparent to the user. If you, if you go to the website, you'll simply see uh, uh, PSK and CW and RTTY 
yeah, there's one there, uh, all coming through simultaneously in the same channel. Uh, the real skimmer, what I call the real skimmer, the one that will actually cover six or seven bands uh, in, in the RTTY segments, is probably going to be RTTY at first, and I don't know when it'll come out, but I'm hoping soon. Okay, we're going to jump around the globe here a little bit over to Germany, a Delta Japan 2 Queen Victor. Uh, is there an up-to-date list of clusters, Telnet accessed, that redistribute RBN skimmer spots and that support the CT1 BOH algorithm? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a fairly, well, I can't say for certain how totally up-to-date it is, but it's, it, there's an attempt to keep it fairly current, and it's the list which is at... Uh, uh, www.dxcluster.info, I-N-F-O. And uh, if you look there and you look for the uh, AR cluster um, nodes, you can identify uh, those that handle skimmer spots. And you can, of course, pretty much use any of them now because geography is not really an issue as far as the nodes that you use. But there's a bunch of them, I, I think, in the 40 to 50 range. Okay. Um, over to uh, VU2 Alpha Bravo Sugar in India. He says, sorry I joined late, so I don't know if it was covered in the presentations. Um, what kind of unique observations have you or some uh, others made of RBN listings during CW contests? Well, I guess my, my favorite uh, observation was uh, W3LPL and this is probably five years ago, and it was after the first time he'd used uh, Skimmer in a contest. And he said, my 15-meter operator is sitting there doping off about midnight with nothing much going on, and all of a sudden a ZL spot comes on. And he thinks, oh, come on. But he goes and he, and he, and he tunes to the, to the frequency, and there it is, a ZL from uh, Maryland, USA, to New Zealand on 15 meters at midnight. Now, who would have, who would have thought that that could ever happen? I, I wouldn't have anyway, but uh, but it did. And uh, let's see other situations of that sort. Well, I know that I know that the big multi ops now feel that they can't live without it because it simply gives them uh, too too good a shot at not missing anything. And uh, for that reason. Uh, I don't think there's anybody who's not using it in the uh, highly competitive multi-multi category. Yeah, I don't know if it was that same instance you're talking about, Pete, but um, you know, with Frank, uh, that they caught an unusual JA opening or something then on 15 meters to it in the middle of the night. It just It's one of those things that they wouldn't have caught had it not been for the, uh, the skimmer. So. Um, okay, uh, here's one from uh, Chris N5KM. I noticed that sometimes a caller in a pileup is spotted by RBN. What would cause that? Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, what what we think happens is the caller's speed is roughly the same as the um, as the runner's speed on that frequency, and his frequency is very close to zero beat. And particularly if he transmits his call a couple of times, which seems often to happen on the uh, on the lower bands, you can you can get a a, a false uh, a false runner spot. In other words, you'll get two spots uh, sitting on exactly the same frequency, and only one of them is the uh, is the actual runner himself. Uh, early on in the in the game, I talked to Alex about the possibility of adding a capability to know, if you will, who's on what frequency, and to check those against that knowledge before sending them on. But at the moment, his uh, software uh, really operates just in the moment, uh, and there's no, uh, no post-processing that is possible. So we've kind of had to just live with that, I'm afraid. Uh, fortunately, it's not too frequent. 
Okay, we've been to Germany, to India, and I'm going to go to the southern end of uh, Stafford County, Virginia, to my neighbor, Mike K4GMH, and uh, he's wondering, Pete, uh, what's the average frequency accuracy of spots on the RBN? Is there a standard method used by the various skimmer stations? Uh, good question. Uh, our target is plus or minus uh, 0.1 uh, kilohertz. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, that's the uh, limit of accuracy of the standard uh, DX spot uh, uh, formats. Uh, so we we do it for plus or minus 0 0.1, and the way we do it, and I I claim no credit for this, but I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, there are two stations who who have uh, GPS disciplined. Uh, SDR receivers, uh, and we use them as our primary um, primary references. One of them is in uh, in the eastern U.S. and the other is in uh, Europe. And <coughs> pardon me. Uh, and other stations are compared to them, and when a station is heard that is um, on the same frequency on the same band um, as one that has been heard by one of these standard stations, then that station will become, that node, that skimmer, will become for a period of time uh, a transitory standard. In other words, I may not be able to hear um, the European standard, but I can hear somebody who has been compared with the European standard and been found to be uh, been found to be accurate. So for a short period of time, he's used as a, as a sort of temporary standard, and then other ones will come along and be used as, uh, as uh, propagation shifts, but it all eventually traces back to those two standard stations. Okay. Uh, John, N0 Tango Alpha, does RCK skimmer run simultaneously with CW Skinner? skimmer with a QS1R. Uh, yes, it does. Um, the, um, the details are a little hairy, but you can find uh, an explanation of how WZ7I does it uh, in, the, uh, in the RBN blog that I mentioned earlier uh, back a few months. Um, as I say, it is a little complicated. It involves RCK skimmer and uh, HDSDR, which is a uh, software-defined receiver program, and a piece of software from OL5Q that splits the data stream coming from the QS1R to go both to CW skimmer and to HDSDR. And once you've got that split accomplished, you can essentially generate infinite, well, <laughs> within limits of your CPU and so on, but you can generate large numbers of simultaneous sessions using the same data. Okay, very good. Let's take one or two more questions, and then we'll wrap it up here. Uh, one from Ted, WA3AER. Are there factors that preclude RBN use for JT modes? Uh, I suspect... I suspect not, um, except that sort of from a conceptual standpoint, uh, you know, we feel that what we're doing is we're, if you will, we're, we're trapping stations in the wild. We're uh, spotting people who are just out there communicating, uh, whereas uh, sites like PSK Reporter, which does a very good job of, of uh, trapping, uh, of uh, spotting PSK stations, pretty much depends on on both ends of the circuit being involved in the same um, in the same process at the same time so we we think we're kind of serving different audiences and um, as of now certainly there's no there's no decoding capability for PSK or or uh, or the JT's built into the uh, skimmer software Okay, very good. Last call. Uh, any other questions? If not, uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Pete, anything else you want to add here before we uh, close things out? Well, I'm looking at the screen here where these uh, 
where where the uh, spots are piling up, and uh, I'm thinking that that's getting pretty messy. But uh, obviously, there's a lot of activity on a weekend day, so gives you some sense that uh, ham radio and even CW is alive and well. Yeah, that uh, definitely is a good sign. So, okay, well, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Pete, thank you very much for taking the time to put the uh, presentation together, and for taking time out of your day to uh, to come here and uh, share that with us. Um, and uh, we we do appreciate uh, all you are doing uh, with that project, and again for uh, coming here today. So, uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, and and thank everybody who uh, who came. I I saw a lot of familiar names and calls, and that's. That's always good to see. Okay, and I'd also like to mention that uh, this uh, webinar program is uh, being sponsored by the Worldwide Radio Operators Foundation, www.wwrof.org. Go there and check them out. That's where all the recorded webinars are posted. And uh, if you'd like help support the mission, uh, these webinar programs and all the other good stuff they're doing, um, by all means, they would uh, certainly love to uh, have your support. So. Uh, Go ahead and check that out as well. A couple of other uh, webinars in the works yet. Uh, just got to put some dates to them, so um, um, I'll let you know. One has to do with a little bit of antenna design, and uh, we're trying to get that going because uh, eventually, at least here in the North America, things will start to warm up again. We've had kind of a cold winter, but uh, get you thinking about uh, some springtime uh, projects, antenna projects. And then another one is just a very basic contesting uh, why I do it uh, maybe for someone that's tried once or twice or people that haven't and uh, we want to try to um, get them involved in the uh, sport as well. So those will be coming up. I will uh, post the announcements once we get the, uh, the dates and times. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll look for you next time. Take care, everyone. 73s. So long.